The saga continues and you're probably stuck at home going, oh man, I'm bored. I wish I had something to do with my computer. And you're probably looking at it going, what can I do? Well, there's a couple things you can do. How about we start by cleaning it? Now's a better time than ever to spring clean your computer. Today we're gonna show you how. If you can't tell, I like boats. And right now, while well, you've got probably a lot of extra free time on your hands, why don't you start playing with boats too? With World of Warships, you can command a massive naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels, including the KMS Bismarck. Recently, World of Warships went through a complete graphical overhaul, making it look even more realistic than it did before. And with hyper-accurate, realistic-looking models based off the actual blueprints and 3D scans of the real ships, they're as lifelike as they could possibly be. Now, new players that sign up using my link in the description below are gonna get a pretty awesome starter pack. You'll get 700 doubloons, 1 million credits, seven days of premium time, the Japanese ship Ishizuchi, and the USS Charleston. Now, with that pack, you'll get off to a pretty good start, but not good enough to take me on. You're welcome to try. I'll find you out there, I promise. So this is our file server. This is where all of our files and all of our things reside, and we hope we backed it up properly before we unplugged everything and whatever. So it's been running for, I don't know, at least six months, maybe longer, nonstop, 24 seven, sitting on the floor in our office, which is super dusty because this is a warehouse in an environment in the desert where it's windy. And to get it clean, there's some things you're gonna need. We're gonna start with, of course, tools. If you need tools to take apart your computer, then look no farther than iFixit. iFixit has everything you need to fix your stuff. Link in the description below. But in all seriousness, they have like small, medium, and large kits, magnetic pads, custom bits, not, well, custom specialty bits to take apart not only your computers, but any small electronics, and they obviously fight the good fight for right to repair. So if you guys wanna learn more about the iFixit kits that are available, check the link in the description below. But we don't actually need tools to take this system apart because this is the Fractal Design R6. We do have all the filters on here, actually. I don't normally leave, yeah, they are all in there. I don't normally leave filters on systems, but we knew that this one was gonna be running 24 seven. And yeah, it's a white top because I stole the gray top for that um, Camaro themed Z01 build I did a while back. And it's actually not that dusty because this is an exhaust, so. <sighs> oh, that was from the inside, yeah, anyway. Um, so if we look at the top, you can already see how dusty it is on the top as exhaust. Stuff like flying around everywhere. This is gonna get kind of gross because one of the first tools that I would really use for this is like a computer vac. They're, they're, they're vacuums that you can get that have special anti-static anti <laughs> anti bristles on them. So that as you're like brushing and doing your thing, you're not creating static electricity and then getting potential ESD destroying some of your stuff. So I don't have that. I have the opposite. This is my compucleaner.com, which I don't even think they, that's the brand anymore. It's just, I got it off eBay. And this has a low and a high speed setting for blowing air. Disclaimer, if you take the, uh, the, <laughs> disclaimer, if you, it got caught on the thing. If you take the path of blowing the dust out, you're just moving it to somewhere else. So you're probably gonna have to do a full dusting or cleaning of your desk and your room or whatever as it's flying around in my face to get rid of the dust. That's why the vacuum, which I don't have and I need to buy, would be the better option because it will suck up the dust, keep it filtered inside the little bag, and then you clean it out afterwards. This, on the other hand, as you can see, will cause dust to fly everywhere. So we're in a giant warehouse, so that's not so bad for us, but if you're in your house doing this, you're just gonna see it land everywhere else. So let's go ahead and take the side panel off and take a look inside. Like, it doesn't look that bad, but I, I guess it depends on what the drives look like. Oh, look at the side right here, though. So all the air comes, <laughs> all the air comes in from the side right there. And we've got this wall of hard drives. These are our 10 terabyte um, Iron Wolf Pro drives, which is just so bad because, not the drives, but the dust. So let's see what the bottom looks like, too. I don't have any bottom fans on here, but. So you can see where the power supply was. Spider webs even. <sighs> see what it looks like if I take this off. Well, it doesn't look so bad from behind. I forgot how well I cable managed this because I was like, we need to be able to easily replace drives if they go bad. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Wow. I really need to step up my game these days. <laughs> 
So what I, what I typically do when I spring clean a computer is I take off all the panels that are not essential to the structure of the case. So for the R6, I've taken off the front cover, um, the glass panel, obviously, the top filter, the bottom filter, and I'm probably gonna take out the graphics card too, which is perfect opportunity to stab myself in the stomach with my iFixit. So this is actually a, a Titan X Pascal Big P. This is the first Titan, not the second Titan. And I'm taking this card out because of the fact that I want to clean out the blower cooler in it. Because this is the type of card that takes the air and pushes it through it, that means it's also taking all the dust and pushing it through it. And considering the amount of dust that's sitting on the card, uh, I don't even want to know how much dust is sitting in the card. This also gives me an opportunity to blow, blow off any dust that might be forming on our RAID card. There is dust sitting here on our 10G network card. You can see all the dust down there. I think a lot of the dust, quite honestly, is stopped by the radiator and the hard drives, because you can see there's a lot of resistance here. In terms, It's just like a big chunk of drives and then the rest of the system, and any airflow is actually cooling the drives, which is kind of nice. Let's go ahead and see, so you can see, Really not that bad, the amount of dust that's sitting on the back plate. If you've got any pets, or you smoke, or you vape near your computer, it'd probably be a lot worse, because nicotine and vape, uh, vapor and all that stuff can kind of create a sticky residue that will work its way into your computer, and then the dust will stick to that. If that ends up being the case, and you need to clean that sort of thing, use alcohol wipes. Yes, alcohol is pretty bad for plastic, but so is water and moisture when it comes to electronics. Now, if you got this wet, it wouldn't hurt the system as long as it's powered off and all the capacitors are discharged, which you can do by just pushing the power button with it unplugged. But as long as you wet this down with like alcohol wipes or whatever, and then you immediately wipe it dry, it's not gonna discolor or make the, the plastic look bad in any way. What'll happen is the plastic will start to look white. It'll kind of like, uh, not stain it, but plastic and alcohol, depending on type of plastic, have different reactions. But if you use alcohol wipes to clean it, you'll get all the sticky residue from the vape juice and the nicotine and the whatever else could be causing, like it, even burning incense will do the same thing in your computer. So if you're dealing with that, then yeah, I would highly recommend those Clorox anti distant or the disinfectant wipes and stuff, because that'll get a lot of that residue off. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go wiping PCB boards and stuff with it, not because it will damage the board, but because you have a chance of knocking off an SMD anytime you're wiping it, anything like that. And if you take a look at our RAID card and our network card and our motherboard, there are all sorts of surface mounted devices all over the place. So you don't want to take an extra chance of knocking that, any of that off. What you could do to clean those is just use, once again, an electronics cleaning brush. Not a vacuum, but an electronics cleaning brush. It looks an awful lot like a paintbrush, but again, they're special bristles that are designed to not generate ESD, or electronic static discharge. So you would just gently remove and loosen a lot of the dust, and then you could get in there and blow it out, and then deal with you know, the dust that lands elsewhere. Anytime you move, remove a component, it's an opportunity for damage and or something to just not work right again. For instance, I would prefer to take the memory out and then you know, make sure the memory modules themselves are clean and blown off. I have no problems taking the memory out and putting it back in, but if you're new to this and you're, let's say you have a pre-built and you didn't build your computer and you're watching this video because you're like, how do I clean my computer? Chances are you're not a power user. So take a picture and mark which RAM modules went where and such. Because even though you may have four identical DIMM slots, or DIMMs, RAM sticks, if you put them back in a different order because they each have a different address like associated with them, then your computer has to go in and basically retrain the memory. If you're running any sort of a factory overclock or you're running some sort of a custom BIOS setting and you rearrange those, your BIOS can revert. And I've seen some people that have had some hard times getting their systems back up and running for basic things if you're not a power user comfortable enough to go into your BIOS and reset things. Like for instance, if I move the memory around and the BIOS goes, your configuration has changed. Your setup has been default, or put back to factory default. Push F1 to enter setup. And you're like, okay, F1. Then you save and exit. And you're running a water cooler like this that's not plugged into a CPU header. You might see potentially an error that's like, error, CPU fan not detected. And you're like, now what do I do? Well, you have to know to go into your BIOS and reset the ignore CPU fan not turning kind of a thing. So just something to keep in mind, if you start unplugging things and you cause your BIOS to have to reset. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I'm a risk taker, if you guys haven't noticed. If you guys haven't seen my 
Titan RTX card fix video that Lewis Rossman was a huge, huge fan of. And he said, Jay, my God, you got a job here anytime you want one with your soldering techniques. And your hot glue techniques. All right, he was like, dude, that was so smart. I'll probably start doing that to protect a lot of the repairs that we do. Lewis, you're welcome. Now, because this is running Unraid, one thing I'm not disconnecting, just because I don't want to have a deal with an issue, is our, is our license key, boot key thing. So with Unraid, you actually need a USB key in there. It's legitimately a key because it has our license and all that stuff on there. If this isn't in there, then our Unraid won't work. So I'm leaving that in there. So with all that said, why don't we go ahead and do a ridiculous slow motion montage of dust flying just to completely piss off the germaphobes that are watching this. All right, there it is. Not as dirty as we thought it was gonna be, but pretty simple. One thing we wanna point out, if you're gonna be wiping things down like this, use a microfiber towel, um, a good quality one, the one that's not gonna leave fibers everywhere. Because if you do this with like any sort of regular rag and you start getting little lint fibers everywhere, you're just trading one mess for another. So the glass is always the hardest to get clean. That I had to use a mixture of Goo Gone, Windex and isopropyl alcohol. Reason being is we still had some residue on there from the sticker that was like on there, like the tempered glass sticker and then just the backing material left a little bit of residue. We finally cleaned that off for the first time. So that was collecting dust the whole time. And then you saw me like kind of wiping down the exterior with the isopropyl alcohol. This is gonna get, like I said, any of the sticky stuff off. Fingerprints came off just fine. You can see it didn't cause any sort of weird discoloration. Um, so the isopropyl alcohol is pretty cheap. You can get this at any drugstore, at least in the US. I don't know what it is for other countries. And then I had to sneeze. Oh, there's so much dust in the air right now. Yeah. See, like I said, if you're gonna blow it out and not use a vacuum, it's just gonna blow it everywhere else. If this were your bedroom and it's a small bedroom or even, even a large bedroom, this is gonna land everywhere else. Your bed, your desk, your wall. Take it to the garage, right? Take it outside, yeah. Another thing I would not suggest, some of you might be watching this going, Oh, well, I got a compressor in the garage. I'm gonna clean this like a man. I'm gonna crank that thing up and just pshh. Let me tell you, I have first-hand experience with a family member of mine that did that very same thing because he's a diesel mechanic. You know who I'm talking about. You, you know who you are out there. He turned on the compressor and was blowing off his fans and spun it to the point to where all the blades just went pink and flew off the fan and one stabbed his motherboard and killed it. So do yourself a favor, use stuff that's not super high pressure. Like this may be moving a lot of air, but it's not super pressurized. It's kind of a conal type shape. Whereas air compressors and nozzles are very focused. If you're gonna do that, put it low, like maybe 30 PSI or something, just enough to, to get the dust loose. You don't want to literally blow it and your system apart. The other thing with air compressors too, is one of the byproducts of compression is moisture. So you might actually be blowing moisture into your system if you don't have a line dryer. And if you're not doing painting with your air compressor, and using a paint gun with it, you probably don't have a line dryer. So just don't use air compressors. That's the way I kind of clean my computers around here. I need to get a vacuum. I need to get a proper dust vac for computers. That way it's got the bristles on there. And in fact, I'll put a link to one I find on Amazon that I think would be a good buy or whichever one I plan on buying. So if you want to know which one I'm going to purchase that will show up who knows when, um, I'll put that link down below. So that's how we clean this system. And believe it or not, this was the dirtiest one we had around here. And I think the reason for that is we don't keep systems super long, if that makes sense. B both Phil and I just had workstation upgrades that are only a month or two old, so they're not that dirty. <laughs> is that a first world problem suggestion right there? No, like because we're a tech channel. We have to try this stuff. No, we, I mean, we, no, it's not a first world problem. It's a business problem. No, it's not a problem. It's a solution, right? It's like when your computer gets dusty, you just buy a new one. <laughs> there was a running joke for a while in my household that when the car needed tires, it was time for a new car. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you can do that too. <laughs> we did that when we were poor too. It wasn't even like, it was just it's time for a new car. We had it long enough. Tires are old. <laughs> so anyway, guys, there you go. If you have some cleaning techniques that you think are worth mentioning, then do me a favor, put them in the comments below and let me know what your best hack is or life hack for cleaning your computer quickly and effectively. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, I missed. I'm tripping.